during long continuous aerobic exercise, we sweat a lot. That creates a major challenge to our body system's ability to maintain fluid and electrolyte balances. Aldosterone is a hormone released by the adrenal cortex. You can see it, the cross section of the adrenal gland, the adrenal gland being these little glands on top of the kidneys, but the cross section here shows the adrenal cortex as the outside portion of that adrenal gland. It releases aldosterone, which is the main mineral corticoid uh, released by the adrenal cortex, and its job is to essentially prevent us from losing too much sodium, which is one of our key electrolytes in our body. So the primary driver for the release of aldosterone by the adrenal cortex is a decrease in plasma electrolyte concentration, again, sodium being the key one. So when we have an increase in aldosterone levels of the body, we have an increase in the sodium retention by the kidneys. And this is going to lead to um, both sodium retention and water retention and potassium secretion by the kidneys. So it does have a lot of actions on electrolyte balances, both sodium, potassium, as well as fluid volumes from, uh, with water and osmosis uh, of that water. Another factor that's going to be playing here is the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, which is often just spoken as ROS. So the ROS pathway uh, is the second secondary driver for aldosterone released by the adrenal cortex. Um, it's going to be activated by a low blood volume or by low blood pressure. So when we have low blood volume or low blood pressure, because low blood pressure is going to be driven in this case by a low blood volume, uh, the kidney is going to release renin. Renin is a hormone that is going to convert angiotensinogen uh, that is released by the liver into angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is then converted into angiotensin 2 by the lungs uh, using the angiotensin uh, converting enzyme or ACE. You've probably heard of ACE inhibitors that uh, help to uh, lower blood pressure and do different things for the cardiovascular system for people who have cardiovascular disease. All right. Uh, angiotensin 2 is then a stimulator for aldosterone release by the adrenal cortex. So all of this gives us, it has lots of actions throughout these different steps of this process, but at the end it is going to increase the aldosterone release uh, and it's going to also have a, an effect, direct effect on increasing blood pressure because angiotensin 2, while also reducing, uh, causing aldosterone release, is going to increase blood pressure by causing vasoconstriction around the body. So all of this is going to uh, feed back on sodium retention, water retention, potassium secretion uh, with having vasoconstriction happening at the same time. So this is a major controller of blood pressure as well as electrolyte and fluid balances in the body. If you are doing prolonged aerobic type exercise, specifically higher intensity exercise, and even more so with uh, exercise in a hot environment, you're going to sweat a lot. Over time, you're going to see that your plasma volume drops off. This is because sweat is essentially filtered blood, so it's pulling the plasma out of the blood. And with that, eventually you're gonna have an increase in antidiuretic hormone, or ADH, and an increase in aldosterone. So let's talk about what exactly that does for us and why those are being released. So the antidiuretic hormone is going to be released by the posterior pituitary gland. It's gonna increase uh, during exercise in response to an increase in plasma os osmolality, so a concentration essentially of those uh, different molecules other than water within the plasma, and a decrease in the plasma volume. Uh, again, all this is being driven by a sweating. So we're going to be sweating a lot, and we're also going to see a little bit of a shift in the fluid from the vascular space to the interstitial space between cells and the inter intracellular space within cells. So this is also going to add to the, lo the, the loss of plasma volume. Antidiuretic hormone is going to uh, di work directly on the kidneys to prevent us from losing more water. So it's going to promote water retention within the kidneys to uh, maintain the water that's left. Aldosterone is going to do a lot of the same things, but it's specifically trying to work to maintain blood sodium levels. So the aldosterone, as already mentioned, is released by the adrenal cortex. Its primary stimulation is low plasma sodium, which leaves the body through sweat, and low blood volume, which also is a, a result of sweating. We can also stimulate uh, aldosterone by decrease in blood pressure uh, from fluid losses and an increase in potassium concentration. Any of these are going to stimulate the, uh, the adrenal cortex to release aldosterone, Aldosterone is going to work to uh, with the kidney to reabsorb sodium that would have otherwise gone out through the urine, and it's also going to work on with the sweat glands to prevent as much sodium from leaving our body through our sweat. 
And with all of this sodium retention, we're going to end up uh, retaining more water because water follows sodium through osmosis, and we're going to excrete more potassium. Both the antidiuretic hormone and the aldosterone are going to have effects that are going to persist well beyond the exercise out to 12 to 48 hours after exercise has stopped. And this is going to help increase plasma volumes when you are adjusting to like a high heat environment. We've talked a lot about how the endocrine system during exercise is going to impact the kidneys in order to maintain fluid and electrolyte balances. It also impacts other systems around the body like the cardiovascular system. I'm going to talk a little bit more of that in another video.